letting me perceive here in fear. I'm very, each time I come here again, I'm very much impressed. With beautiful country, beautiful weather, and nice people, good food, everything. And thank you again for inviting me here. Also, thank you, sponsors, for the, uh, having the opportunity to speak to you. Now, this is a topic that you give to somebody older, you know, because uh, to look and to see all the, you know, side effects, long-term toxicity of treatment of cancer, you need to work many years in the field and you see them with your own eyes. So the topic of this uh, presentation is secondary cancers in long-term survivors of breast cancer. How? to overcome the risk. So, of course, I speak here not only on behalf of Haifa and Bistot, but also on behalf of our own organization. We are very active in this organization. We did a course in Haifa for uh, palliative care, and uh, we are very much also involved in the course that has been uh, run in Istanbul on the uh, radiobiology. And one can see, I don't like to involve politics and medicine, but you know, the, you hear in the newspaper, Turkey, Israel, on the other hand, the people are very friendly and we continue with our efforts in Istanbul. So, uh, the prologue of my talk, the consequences of success, because you heard here about all the successes in the treatment of uh, head and neck and breast cancer, the consequences of success are increasing incidence of radiation in use secondary primary malignancies occurring after many years of follow-up. But before going further, I should tell you not to become paranoid because still the advantage of the treatments including radiotherapy, modern technique, is a lot more than the very low risk of secondary malignancies. However, we should be acquainted and aware of this complication. Also, we should remember that breast cancer is a chronic disease. These are survival cares over the years in uh, many series over the years, the 90s compared to the 50s. It's better, but it's a chronic disease. And patients who are treated at the age of 40 today are expected to live at least 40, 50 years now in our modern world. And one should think not only on the immediate results, but also what will happen to this patient 20, 30, 40, and 50 years from the time you treat her, not only the immediate time. And treating breast cancer, and specifically radiation, is risky. You are on a very thin thread, and you have to weigh and consider the advantages versus the complications. So when you speak about radiation and breast cancer, one should mention two of possibilities to be exposed to radiation. One is the therapeutic radiation that we give after surgery, and the other one is the radiation exposure from the diagnostic workup, diagnostic radiation. So let's first start with the diagnostic very briefly, because there are now some voices telling you that it's risky, all these mammographies that are done in the screening, they increase the rate of cancer induced by these mammographies. So let's look at the figures. Number one, one should be aware that you need to use the modern digital mammography because, of course, these are very small numbers, but they are better than the numbers using the screen film mammography because the exposure to radiation is less. But please, be advised that these are really small numbers and one should not be hysterical about them but remember them and please use modern technology when you do the screening mammography. And this just to demonstrate that still despite the fact that these mammographies increase a little bit the rate of secondary malignancy because of the mammography, still the benefit of doing the screening is shown in these numbers. The mortality from uh, breast cancer by using the screening is reduced significantly and one should encourage this national screening between the age of 50 to 70 or 74 in the non-risk population starting at 40 in the population with risk factors. So this is about diagnosis. Let's move now to therapeutic radiation. We 
we saw over the last almost two years five cases of patients that presented with these lesions. Who can tell me what is this lesion? You see? Angiosarcoma of the breast, radiation induced angiosarcoma of the breast. And this should be diagnosed as early as possible because I'll show you the results. If you don't discover them early and you don't operate them once they're still operable, they will ultimately die, all of them. So be aware of this complication. And we see the first time just do good surgery because there is no other option for these ladies. So we saw five cases of the last two years. And we saw three or four of these of the last two, three years. This is a patient who came with us to us with this narrowing of the esophagus here. And, and you can see it on the CT scan. Also, you can see on the CT scan, very poor CT scan, but you can see the radiation fibrosis. So this lady was irradiated in 1992. She received radical mastectomy and post-operative radiation. Apparently, this woman today would receive partial, uh, probably would receive uh, local excision, probably, and radiation. And if she would have mastectomy, probably she will not even receive radiation nowadays. But she, at that time, received radical mastectomy, radiation. And this is the field of radiotherapy that she received to the chest wall. The chest wall was irradiated with the electron. The supraclub was irradiated with 6 and 3 photons on the accelerator. And you can see. This is the area of the hot spot, the largest dose to the esophagus, and lo and behold, she, this is where she, exactly where she developed this squamous cell that's not the, of the esophagus in 2008, that is 16 years after she received radiation and was cured. By the way, she underwent surgery and she's doing well now, three years after surgery, so she's still on follow up. Now, the topics of my presentation we divided the lessons from the history, carcinogenesis and radiation, carcinogenesis and genetics, the magnitude of the problem, the impact of modern RT technology, and how to overcome the risk, practical recommendations. <laughs> so these are pictures from the past. This is from 1898. You can see that uh, soon after the discovery of x-rays, it was already used for diagnostic purposes, but of course without any consideration of risk, you see the radiologist looking straight into the x-ray tube, because nobody cared about, nobody knew about the risk of radiation. This is a very famous picture that I keep showing. This is a very efficient radiotherapy department in London in 1903. They were very efficient to have three units in one room, so each lady could share the benefits of the other.